Now it is. <laughs> See, I got discombobulated. <laughs> but yeah, I appreciate that. Well, well, <laughs> well, thank God all that other stuff wasn't on there. Okay, so well, <laughs> welcome to Soul Speaks 5D. We got V in the house. I believe this is show number 87. <laughs> but yeah, we were just exchanging uh, you know, ex exchanging uh, good uh, vibes with each other. Uh, yeah, I, and, I, and just so it, get, it gets caught on the tape. Um, yeah, I really, uh, Elevate with V is a really great podcast. It's, it's uh, probably, what, 30 episodes in or something, you know, to that degree. Uh, but you do a real good job of it. And, uh, and I'm really, I'm really uh, happy that, that you're doing that and others like you doing it because so many, uh, so many uh, feminine in particular that have been kind of in the background for quite some time that have been connected, you know, not to create any comparisons, men and women, because it's, it's all equal, but we are in these bodies for a reason as, as Morgan Lee says, you know, I'm a man, you're a woman. And, and, uh, there's, there's some, uh, point in that, but, uh, yeah, I think more, the more of these women that are stepping up, the more that will step up. So I'm excited to support, uh, people like you, women like you, um, that are stepping out and being seen and many of them against their, uh, <laughs> against their human aspects, uh, preferences, but yeah. So yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Todd. I love it. We're just going with the flow and I know we've had some fun little tech things, but Hey, that's part of how it is, right? It's like, we're just going with the flow and whatever needs to happen will happen. And yes, thank you so much. And I think that's something that I've always really appreciated about you ever since I connected with your channel is how much you are about really supporting and um, helping a lot of other, not just you know, women, men as well, but of course, mm. a lot of women mm. who might have been more in the background or are afraid to come out. And to me, this also connects back to, you know, for those that believe in this kind of stuff, you know, we've had many lifetimes. I know for yeah. me, I feel like I've had many lifetimes where I wanted to express and it was not a possibility. So in this lifetime, I'm getting the opportunity. So even though there is some fear that you have to push through, once you come out on the other side, you just keep doing it. And like you said, you just keep going. And I truly feel so much joy and alignment when I do these interviews. I just feel like I light up. So I know that I'm on track and it's wonderful to hear feedback because one of the things with podcasts is you don't always get to connect with your audience. You know, people are listening, they're tuning in and it's beautiful to see the numbers, but there is something about that beautiful piece of connecting and really getting that live feedback from somebody. Right. I'm just letting everybody know where we're at. Sounds good. So it's wonderful to see people like you, because I think for me, you're definitely someone who inspired me as well as I was already on my journey of, you know, starting my podcast and to just see that what people are doing, how they're doing it and to not necessarily do it anybody else's way, like find your own way. Right. What is your voice? What is your way that you do it? And I feel like I've fallen into that groove pretty quickly. And probably also because I knew a lot of the guests that were coming on, you know, it's different when you start with someone you have no connection with versus when you have a connection, the flow is just different. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Uh, and you know, uh, what I noticed too, like I did one, um, I mean, uh, kind of, uh, doing the same thing for a sister, uh, a beautiful sister named Anna Toothman. Uh, and you know, I, she'd come, she popped in because a lot of times I'll see someone and I'll say, you know, you ought to think about <laughs> doing this. And, uh, and, you know, and, and I, I don't know, I guess I have a spider sense or, you know, spidey sense or whatever. And, and she's like, yeah, I've been thinking about that. And then she popped in one day on a, a open mic like you did and others have, we need to start doing those again, uh, which we will now that we've unveiled the Sology uh, Fest. So we, you know, we'll be doing more on, on the uh, mainstream, uh, uh, social media but uh she came on uh i invited her on she invited a friend on this is about three weeks ago and i said uh you know let's do a 
Soul Speaks 5D, I'll sit in with you and kind of moderate and, you know, if you want. But when we started the show, I, I just said to her, do you want me just to engineer this and be in the background? Uh, or do you want me to sit in with this? She goes, I think I'm going to go ahead and try it. And it was so amazing because both her and her friend were kind of both stepping in. And you could hear a little bit of the nerves, but I love the way they just pushed through it. And it just made it that much more authentic. And uh, and it was really powerful. Uh, and And so what I'm getting at is once you get through the first few, and it's not just applied to podcasting, I think it's applied to anything that we wanted to try. Like I started trying to sing last year, about a year ago, and and it's it's been a really powerful thing, expansive thing for me uh, to be able to to do that and like take my words and then put them to a melody without practicing. I've never had any rehearsals, <laughs> you know, Ty won't let me. And then it's even become where I'm not even reading words. I'm just making them up as, a, you know, as they come to me, like a channel. So there's so many things that we, if we can push through and, and, and understand that the nervousness is part of it and it's actually energy that we can kind of channel. And uh, so, but you watching you, you, you pretty much a natural from the very first one, you're pretty, you know, pretty calm, cool and collected. So big props to you there. But Aww. I, Thank yeah. you. Well, I wanted to ask you too, though. So you've done, uh, you know, quite a few podcasts now and you've had, you know, obviously uh, quite a few different people on there and you have stepped out, um, at least from my perspective, you've really, you know, gone out there and, and, and grabbed some diversity uh, in diver di diverse subjects as well. Uh, the few that I've popped in on, you know, and, and just picking up the energy of it. Um, what's it been like for you? I mean, I know for me, it feels like sometimes like it's a, it's a session and I'm the client. And, uh, and then I also, you know, get great satisfaction out of uh, hearing people's stories and, and seeing, you know, especially now seeing people show up and being just so real and so human, but like, what have you gotten out of it so far? Oh, that's such a great question, Todd. I will say, I think that I truly believe that my team and the universe has been supporting me because like you said, there are nerves, there are lots of other things. I think because I started, like I knew I wanted a particular guest to start my podcast with and I wasn't sure if he was ready because he's also someone who's a beautiful human being, but tends to just kind of do his work and kind of go hide out. And so when I was able to reach out and he said, yes, I think that also kind of sparked a little bit of like, okay, I'm going to feel comfortable when I start. Like my first interview is going to be with someone that I know. It's going to be a great way to get into it. And so when I did that, I think it immediately just put me at ease. It put my guest at ease. And so, like I said before, because I know almost everybody that I've invited on the show, there's just this comfort level. So I'm usually not nervous. I'm like really excited because I know a little right. bit something about them. We have a little bit of a relationship. And a lot of times it's about the other person coming who said, oh my God, I've never done a podcast. I mean, right. I've never been interviewed. I'm just really nervous. And so I think people like you and me, there is something that we're able to provide that space that's very comfortable and comforting at the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, just really appreciating each person, right? Like just every person that comes in, you just make them the focal point and say, whatever you wanna share is beautiful and it's okay to make mistakes. We're having a human experience. And so I think for me in the process of doing it, um, I feel so inspired by the people that come on and their stories yeah, yeah. and what they've been through. And I think it becomes like this two way street, at least when you're doing the podcast, yeah. um, you know, I'm giving the space and I'm learning and the same for them. And so it's just been this beautiful co-creation. And I think for me, that's the most magical thing when you get to co-create with someone else and see what it you know results in the end it just brings me so much joy and i'm learning i think when i was doing the podcast even up to a week ago i was like you know i'm just doing a podcast and i just love it i enjoy it so much and not realizing that it does have a ripple effect even though i might not be in connection with the people that are listening directly it's doing what it's supposed to be doing and it's getting out there and I'm receiving something and the person who's sharing, there's healing for them as well, right? Because yeah. they're getting to share this really big part of themselves that they might not have shared with people other than their friends. So they're overcoming this like, wow, how many people are gonna listen to this? 
who is going to be the audience that's going to be listening and to kind of come back to the beginning i was nervous when i started todd because i've been through my own dark night of the soul for the past two and a half years really and so this podcast was birthed out of that and so yeah. i was really nervous because i'm like wow people are going to see me i felt like i'm going to be out there naked because it's like i'm so like so much has transformed and changed during the pandemic that there are going to be people who are going to be saying what is she talking about? Who is she? Who is this Vanita? Do I recognize her? What are these topics that she's talking about? So there was a lot of that and it kind of held me back a little bit. I didn't launch because I was like, what is, what are these people gonna think? What is my family gonna think? So I really had to push through a lot of that. And now thankfully for me, it's just like, you know what? I'm in alignment, it doesn't matter. I'm doing what feels right. I feel joyful, I feel happy. And I'm just going to keep going. This is where I'm supposed to be right now. So very that's long beautiful. answer to your question. No, that's a, be that's a beautiful answer. There's so much in there. Uh, you know, like I was talking about, it feels like a session because uh, I don't do a lot of sessions uh, over the, especially over the last few years. I used to when I first woke up back in 2012, 13, but um, it's that equal energy exchange. It's like you hear practitioners talk about how they get something out of the session it's not just them serving uh up, you know serving up the energy they're actually getting something out of it and so these these shows are like that uh you know not only is there subject matter which i want to speak to in a second to talk to you about um subject matter that has been off the beaten path and even off the alternative uh you know alternative options such as disclosure platforms, conspiracy platforms, and even light worker and starseed platforms uh, to a lesser degree. But I'm talking about the human aspect showing up regardless or irregardless of what they may or may not have experienced or, or connected to. Because, you know, one of the big things that we all had to get past was comparing, you know, ourselves. Oh, why can she do that? And why can he do that? But I can't do that. Well, there's things that we do that they can't do. And you know what I'm talking about. But uh, but to, that's a really powerful thing to me is is uh, I got chills right now thinking about it because so many people, you know, and, you know, we're, we're, we're moving towards 4400 episodes of this show. And, 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 you know, I was talking to my mother the other day about it. And she said, that's a lot. And I said, it actually is a lot because <laughs> I follow a lot of platforms and, and I know how many they've done. Like Rogan's probably done about 2000, I think, last time I checked. But it's not really about. Todd or or Sology, it's it's about 4,400 opportunities for people to do exactly what you said, to step mm -hmm. past whatever it is that's holding them back and and come into alignment and accept their own joy and bliss and and comfort with themselves. Um, so yeah, I'm I really I, I love your answer. And you know, one of the things I noticed these last few days, I'm really uh, I tap into a lot of different things. And unlike some people, you know, I do tap into what's going on in the world stage, but not deeply. And I don't get affected too often. If I do, I step away. Uh, but I, especially now, it doesn't really bother me. But I find, but I, I don't, I don't look at the surface of everything. So I see, for instance, all these uh, uh, whistleblowers going into Congress and talking about these things. And I just got a chuckle. I had a lunch a while ago, and and uh, and I just got a chuckle because they're talking about at Congress. Not only are they talking about these UFOs have been held uh, and technology has been kept from us for the last 50, 70, whatever years. Not only are they talking about biologicals being found on the craft. Now they're talking about, as I saw this morning, interdimensional beings openly in Congress. And so on one hand, I know that disclosure is disclosure and everything has to come out. Uh, and on the other hand, I'm going, what are they up to? <laughs> you know, kind of thing. But I feel great because I feel like that there's so many of us that really with what you described in your personal experience and those of your guests that have never been on a podcast and that they step through that, like we're talking about, that's really who we are. And so it doesn't really matter if we have earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, uh, you know, uh, 
you know, whatever, whatever these things may be, uh, you know, pure bliss, paradise, Eden, whatever it is, we're, we're, we know who we are now. And every day we're getting stronger. So I really feel like that these very human uh, endeavors are what are making the new code that we're offering to the universe. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a really humbling and powerful time to be alive. I feel like Couldn't you're interviewing me. <laughs> <laughs> I went into, I went flashback to when I was on your show. Um, so yeah, and, and you know, I think when you came on the show, and if anyone hasn't seen the show that we did together on Soul Speaks 5D, uh, just uh, query on Facebook or YouTube, uh, her name and Soul Speaks 5D, and you can find it and she'll talk about it. But I don't remember in detail, uh, I do remember uh, you talking about the dark nights of the soul. I didn't realize that it was just so recent though. Uh, but you just said something that I thought was very profound because you came out of it and launched this podcast. Uh, what, what was that like? I mean, if you went through, and we can all relate, two and a half years of dark night of the soul, and on the other side of it, you come out guns blazing doing a podcast. How did you come to that? Oh, that's such a great question. Um, you know, for all of us that have been through our dark night of the soul, a lot of that is very confusing. You don't know what's going on. What are you exploring? And you don't have all the tools you're exploring. And I know for me, it literally lined up with the pandemic. I guess that's how I had it planned. Like mm. March 2020 kicked in and boom, I was in my journey. And, you know, it all had kind of come from this amazing food business that I had with a business partner and we were getting ready to like expand and grow, get onto Amazon. Like it was just, we were ready to, to get going. And I was so excited. I was so passionate about this business and everything fell apart, Todd. Like the business partnership fell apart, everything fell apart. And I was left kind of dazed, confused, completely felt like I was going through a death and a divorce at the same time. And this was like the end of 2019. And I knew that I was in so much trauma in so much pain that I had to do mm. something. And so, you know, as they say, even though I wasn't aware of it, the universe kind of lined up things. And I started my journey by going to India with my mom who was there. And we did a 21 day Ayurvedic Panchakarma detox. So this is like heavy wow. duty, like, talk about like purging right like it is like it is very intense but i wanted to do something that was holistic i mean i could have done other things here but i just felt like i wanted to do something that i believed in that would work for me and that was the start of my journey and so that was almost kind of like doing that physical purging and then when I came back, I'm like, all right, Vanita, now we're going to get to it. We got to get to yeah. the other pieces. <laughs> yeah, the emotional, the mental. Oh, uh, yes. Yes. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little familiar with Ayurveda. Uh, and I know it that it, I, I know I know enough about it. Um, but I've never heard of a 21 day um, themed uh, cleansing like that. I'm assuming that it's that you, the purpose is to purge and that the food that you take in or not take in, I don't know if there's fasting involved, but uh, it must, it must be directed for that purpose. What, what was that like real quick? What was the 21 day thing like? Yeah, it was very amazing. I went to a place in South part of India um, and it's five generations of Ayurvedic practitioners. I did my research and they don't even accept you until you fill out like a 12 page questionnaire, which is literally everything, health and mental, everything. Um, and then the doctor takes a look and then he'll be like, okay, I'm gonna take you on because I feel like I can actually help you or make a difference. So basically, like you said, you are familiar. For those who are not familiar, this is a very ancient practice in India, which is, it's actually mind, body, spirit healing, and it's very much plant-based and um, herbs. And um, obviously they do yoga and lots of other things. So because it's very customized, it's based on your individual body, like how I was treated was completely different the way that my mom was treated, but he knew exactly what I had been through, everything that I was struggling with at the time. So it was completely 
you know, kind of customized to me. And it's just a whole bunch of different therapies. You know, they do all kinds of different types of therapeutic massages. So this is not the, you're going to a spa <laughs> there and you're like, oh my goodness, this is so amazing. No, when they were doing the massage, I'm not kidding. I was crying on the table. Like it was that painful. But I also knew that they were literally going in layers and layers and pulling out toxins and anything else, you know, trauma related that was in my body, all the inflammation, all the trauma it had to come out. And I chose that way because I was mm. like, you know what, I can do this. I know it's going to be really painful. I was crazy bruised up, but I knew I was making progress. And wow. truly, it's one of the most amazing things that I went through and the doctor is just amazing. Like I'm going to have him come on my show because I mean, that's how much I loved him. And he's so dedicated to what he does, but also just such an amazing human being, wow. you know, and to think that once we left, my mom and I left, he was always there. Like even to this day, if I reach out to him to ask him a question, he will respond. I'm like, wow. who does that? Right that tells you that someone just loves what they do so anyways just kind of in a nutshell you know you don't always see all the results immediately because you're going through your body's going through shock right in 21 days and yes you were right there's also food and other things but we ate really well i love south indian plant-based food so i was i was really happy um, but it's only when i came back and i started to put myself into the practice of journaling so i could actually see all the changes, all the things that I decided to do um, after the detox. And when I looked six months down the road, so much had shifted for me in every area. And it was just tremendous to be able to say, wow, I did this thing and look where I've come while I'm going through my dark night of the soul journey, right? So it was like a combination and just the perfect thing for me to start with so that I could kind of clear the canvas to do the other work that I needed to do. Wow, that's powerful. That's a powerful uh, testimony. Um, and so you, you, this, your whole world unraveled <laughs> 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 as you're heading out of uh, 2019 and, uh, and then going to 2020 and, and of course COVID hits. By the way, we can say anything we want to on this. Yes. Show. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, if you share the, the thing out, you might, might want to be careful. That's why I make it editable for the people, for our guests, so they can cut cut out whatever they need to. Um, but uh, so COVID coincided with that. You go to India, you come back, you do the emotional, you do the mental. I'm sure, and uh, and somewhere in that chaos and <laughs> turmoil and uh, abyss, you say to yourself one day, your soul says, uh, "You're going to do a podcast." <laughs> I mean, I mean, unless I'm getting you wrong, unless you had like aspirations since you were a little kid to want to be the next Oprah or something, you know what I mean? But I didn't get that. So, so somewhere along the line, it popped in and you must have been like, what? <laughs> <laughs> You're so right, because I think I I got so lost in the question about Ayurveda, I, I forgot what your original question no, was. No, no. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, I mean, very much. It's like, you know how when you go through a diet soul, I'll be honest, even though it was so isolating, I was completely by myself. And I understand that is what the dark night of the soul is. But I didn't know that at that time. I'm like, wow, I have no support. I can't talk to a single human being. I'm locked down in my place can't even go have a cup of coffee with someone. And so, but still, whether I was aware of it or not, I was obviously listening to my guidance, right? Whether that's my clairs, my guides, something was allowing me to take one step at a time to keep moving forward. And I just kept going with the flow. I've been in hospitality for, you know, many, many years since pretty much 2001. And I love it. I love that job. And I got laid off during the pandemic. So now I had 24 seven to focus on myself and my healing journey. And I remember going to India in like 2021, like fall of 2021. And I was getting to this place where I'm like, I love hospitality, I love being in service, but so much is shifting for me. I feel like I need to do something else, but I just don't know what that thing is. And truly, like you said, I literally feel like it was some divine guidance that just dropped in like a download because I just remember waking up saying, 
huh, wouldn't it be interesting to do a podcast? And I barely <laughs> even listened to podcasts at the time. At the time, I remember listening to Anthony Williams, The Medical Medium, and to Jay Shetty, because I thought he was very inspiring. Those were really the only two people I'd listened to. And it just popped into my head. I'm like, oh, that's really interesting, a podcast. <laughs> so that's kind of how it started. Oh my God, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. And then the fight starts, right? Everybody talks about that. I was talking to uh, Pamela from Higher Vibrations uh, yesterday, and uh, she was saying, you know, I got the uh, the uh, um, the intel or whatever, the nudge to do a podcast and create a channel on YouTube. And I said, okay. And she said, that was a year ago, a year before I started. It took an entire year. <laughs> but there's so many out there like that. Um, and, and it's beautiful because, you know, I, I downloaded this, uh, my part of it. I downloaded my part of, uh, you know, Sology like in 2012 and, and then it would just keep coming in and I never really fully understood it. But the one thing I did understand that it would be a 24 hour, seven day a week, 365 day a year, all day long, every day, uh, uh, universal cast with, with, uh, an infinite number of channels that basically gave a voice to anyone and everyone, right? And, and then I thought to myself, well, that's the universe, right? I mean, that's what we're talking about. That's what you're talking about. When you're talking about what, what the experience has been like for you, uh, you know, where you're, you're like, you know, we do, we have these concerns and we, we go, oh my God, what are these people going to think? I mean, some people had like two Facebook accounts, you know, I've had people come on like that and they're like, you know, uh, don't you know I've had people say take the thing off you know and, and just different things but then you get to this point where you go you know what this feels all right for me and if it's all right for me then what's wrong with that and that's really the free to me that's the free energy of the soul free energy that Tesla talked about right like the 369 but uh yeah it's just uh it's an amazing thing because after all this time after all this woo woo and dark nights and everything in between you know, because everybody has their own experiences, different clairs and all that, uh, that it comes back to, we can't remove ourselves from the human being. So we spend enough time like in the muck, right? And, 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 you know, and then finally, we're just like, you know what, I've had enough of this. It reminds me of like when I was a kid and, you know, all boys get picked on, right? You know, and, uh, and at some point you just say, you know what, F it. I'm not, you know, I got two choices. I can either sit here, be scared and get beat up or I can, or I can, you know, I can just put my foot down and say, I've had enough of this and I might get beat up, but I might not. And, you know, the crazy thing is when you, when you make that choice energetically, which I believe is what this is all about, uh, where you just say, no, I'm not going to do that. That doesn't feel okay to me or that feels okay to me you know uh i think that's that's what that's what it takes and that's what we're doing through these physical uh you know these physical actions that we take that are actually aligning with our thoughts and our words and our feelings and our emotions and our collaborators so it's just a beautiful kind of thing and i gotta tell you too you, i think i told you this before but your uh your symbol your logo is incredible it's absolutely incredible. Thank really you is. so much, Todd. I really appreciate it. Like I said, again, I think there's, as I've been on my journey, and like you said, it's not been a very long time. And that's also been something that I had to kind of push through because, you know, there was this element of comparing, you know, that imposter syndrome that kicks in. It's to say, but like, oh my goodness, people have been doing this for like 10, 15, 20 years. Like, who am I? Who am I to come on the scene and be like, oh, I'm going to do this thing, you know, and with not a lot of experience and not doing a ton of research, a lot of this was truly just relying on my inner what felt right, right. and to go for it. And like you said, I stalled. I stalled it uh, probably a good six months. I probably <laughs> started my podcast earlier, but I had to push through all of these things because, you know, and this is true of everything, right, Todd, there's always going to be naysayers yeah. or people who probably mean well, but the way that they present information will make you doubt yourself or say, oh, 
maybe they're right because everybody's like you're gonna do a podcast but what are you gonna do for your job though like what are you gonna do for work what are you gonna do to make money and I said yeah these are all really good questions (laughs) (laughs) I'm laughing because I can I'm laughing because you you know I know that you know Todd Uh you know and so I literally had to like work through all of that Todd and just be in this knowing in my in my heart, in my soul that, you know what, Vanita, this is the chance, do what feels right. And I started to really align with this thought of, if I do what I love, everything is gonna fall into place. It really will. So I just have to just keep surrendering and knowing that if I feel aligned and I know that I'm making a difference, even if it's just for me and one other person, yeah, exactly. that's it. that's it just stay in and not only that i think one of the other things that's so important to me is i'm following my joy i'm following what makes me happy and isn't that it like if we can be in a place like i'm getting chilled as i'm saying that is just follow your joy and passion and do what feels right and of course we have to put effort things are not just going to all miraculously just drop in your lap but it's just creating that space because if the universe say, sees that you are doing what feels right and you're in alignment, other things come into your pathway. So yeah. I'm, I'm putting myself in there. It takes work. It's not just happening by itself, but That's I keep right. aligning to that. And, and I don't know about you, but uh, <laughs> I don't know, so much of this is making me laugh, uh, but it, it never goes away. And what I'm talking about is that little nervousness, the little subtle doubts, uh, you know, the the voice that says, "How are you going to make it?" I mean, I'm having this up. You know, I'm having this yesterday, <laughs> launching the Sology Fest, right. knowing that I've got eighty percent more to to add to the Sology Fest page, knowing that by society's terms or conventional norms that it's not ready it's not there's not enough spit and polish it's not profession but it's been like this forever and and but you're very very right especially now you know like the term instant manifestation like it's really taken on new meaning because it's not like we thought it's actually what you just said which is you take the step and then the universe meets you then right and then it, it just, it just doesn't, it doesn't, I always say it like this, you don't have a savings account, an energetic or, or, or whatever you want to call it, a savings account, whatever type of energy you want to put in there, a uh, label on it, in the 5D, 6D, 7D, you don't have it, you, you, you don't have like a cushion, you just have the present moment, and it all, it never leaves that whole spontaneous, intuitive, innate, you know, all those prints, all those qualities that they have the courage, they have to be implemented, but you get met right away. And the other reason I was laughing is because, I don't know if people know this, but uh, so it would have been in 2015, you know, I had already been doing Soji for three, like three years, but it was all writing and images and, and really Facebook Live wasn't going, you know. So right when it started to go, I got the nudge and I, it was it was January. And so I did four, I did four videos <laughs> from January until August 25th. And they were all with my phone and they were like a minute and a half to two and a half minutes long. <laughs> that was that was me trying to get, trying to understand that what I was hearing was, you know, uh, you know, what I was hearing. And then um, the weekend, because I didn't start doing shows with people, it would be another, uh, probably another year, right? Or at least another six or eight months from August of 2015. Uh, so that, it was, on a, it was on a Friday. I had a, a, a job in construction. I came home, I was off for the weekend, and I literally sat on the couch Friday, Friday night, Saturday, all day and all night, Sunday, until probably like eight o'clock at night and i finally just said okay i'm gonna do it <laughs> and i threw on a, a the doors 
break on through the other side, you know, and I just got the thing and I just started talking, you know. Uh, so, yeah, it it it's funny because, you know, we're talking about podcasting or doing lives, but so much of the work that we're doing, all of us in our own way, is breaking down these uh, the false power of these impediments and obstacles uh, in the energetic field. And we all do this in different ways in different aspects of our journey. We break these barriers down and, and make it easier for other people. And there's things that, that other people have done that I couldn't do, but I could do now, or I will be able to do because they've broken these, these, you know, they've gone in and bulldozed the, the trail. So yeah, we can't, we can't underestimate the little things in life you know they really are the big things and uh yeah this is this is amazing amazing energy here it really is with yes, you yes i um, agree <laughs> you, and and you said uh i'm just a little curious uh about the whole hospitality and uh you know that that type of industry the, the food industry uh I, I like to cook and it's important to me um you know, I live alone right now, and you know, I I I really take the time after all these years. You know, it's been it's it's been an evolution. Uh, you know, I buy organic; everything's organic, or I won't touch it. Um, and uh, which really pisses me off because I love corn, <laughs> and I know that's the most GMO thing that you can get, and it's very hard to find organic corn. I can't find it anywhere uh, here in Houston, but but you know, it's it's really just. It's an, I, I do intermittent fasting most every day. And, and so I really look forward to what I'm going to eat and how I prepare it and all that stuff. Were you, when you were doing that before you went into what you've been talking about, was there like a, a that type of connection to what you were doing and the food itself? Because that's another thing. If and when I go out to eat, I, I really only go to places where I know they and you don't, you can't always know, but, but you know, like in a neighborhood like mine, you can get a feel for it. Uh, but I, I really like to go places where the people are really into what they're doing. Right. Because I know energetically it gets passed on to me, but did you have that type of awareness when you were, when you were in that industry? Um, I will say one of the things that's impacted the most is, you know, I'm Indian by heritage mm. and, you know, the way that we grew up and my mom, I thank her a lot is, you know, she did pull in a lot of the practices like Ayurveda and homeopathic mm. and, you know, most Indian people like, you know, we do like to cook things from scratch. So I didn't grow up with things that are, you know, necessarily heavily processed or, right. You know, so there was a lot of that that was already part of my kind of innate growing up and the hospitality business. Um, I was a concierge and mm. I got the job right when 9-11 happened. And I was like, do I have a job? Like, am I going to have a job? Because I just interviewed and then 9-11 happened. But thankfully, I did have a job. And so I was kind of more on the concierge side, which means you. I was just interfacing with the, right. you know, clients and guests and basically showcasing and promoting a city that I love, Chicago. So it felt very natural. And again, it's cool. so interesting when you talk to a lot of, uh, let's say, light workers or whatever terms you want to use, we are all in service and we just find different channels to serve. Right? right and right, so right. that was mine and it felt very natural and so to some degree i think having that experience and enjoying it and knowing that it's part of who i am has probably made it easier for me doing my podcast because i naturally love to connect with people and i love to be with other people's energy to put people at ease and it's feels like an extension. So you know how they say, at least this is my belief, nothing that we've ever done in our life 
is like lost right. every single piece like is adding on that layer so that the next step that you take you're bringing these beautiful tools with you and I, that's kind of what it feels like for me and kind of coming back to what you were saying in terms of food it was actually really interesting because when you're a concierge you are wined and dined i mean you get the best of everything presented to you and so it was always for me about finding that balance between right. like food that's being presented and also my own sort of like oh but i kind of prefer to eat healthier food i like to do you know how you said to cook so i was always finding my balance of mm. i like to cook very simple and balance that out with going out and eating and enjoying all these wonderful things and when i went through my dark night of the soul it gave me even more reason to focus on preparing all of my food like I didn't order out I think maybe once right. during that time because I was very much focused on what I'm putting in my body and what I enjoy eating yeah yeah well that makes sense to me that you were a concierge I was in the uh I was in the the uh what would you call it uh you know like the high rent hotel business uh when I was 19 for about a year i was in i was in the premier hotel uh in dallas uh, i was a bellman i said well i started off as a valet then i became the head valet then i became the night bellman which was really cool because i got to be the doorman the limo driver <laughs> the valet and the bellman <laughs> all in one uh in the most popular hotel and uh, newest hotel in dallas at the time but i really liked the hospitality i liked the uh, customer uh, guest services because uh, I'm like you, I like to, I like people. I like you know variety. I like uh, I like to I like people and I like to entertain people. Like they come to my house. I like to you know present things. I guess and 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 accommodate you know in in a good way. So now I can see why uh, you you fell into the podcasting so easily. Because if if I have to think about everyone that I've kind of been involved or been aware of when they started you're probably like one of like the top three or four that just walked right into it and was just pretty pretty much you know comfortable with it and not having you know the, the degree of nervousness that that most people have which is which is cool and natural and and makes sense to me uh that you're doing what you're doing the other thing i was laughing about too when you were talking about it's like the, the whole thing about how you're going to make money and <laughs> And again, <laughs> you know, even right up until the, you know, it just, it never, it never stops. And, and, uh, you know, people talk about, oh, well, money's just energy and it is, uh, and you might have a program that you're, no, I don't see it that way. I really don't. Uh, I really feel like that, uh, it's energy and, uh, the principles of money of, of how we handle money of, of, and so on, or how we hoard money or not, or whatever, uh, like everything else, it, we're not going to do anything the way we used to do it. So there's got to be this new mathematical geometric equation on how we do it. And, and uh, I find myself, it's funny because I find myself, I talk to myself like most of us. <laughs> it used to be, we thought we were weird, but it's really actually, uh, actually a healthy thing. But I talk to to that energy all the time. I thank it. Uh, I pay it forward and i noticed over the last probably three or four years there's been a slow evolution and expansion of of the definition of abundance and and money is you know today part of that um but yeah i think that's uh you know as we're kind of reflecting on all this like working with people and even in regard to food it's the same type of thing i kind of talk to that energy the way i talk to the food <laughs> you know and the trees and the trees. I love talking to the trees. Yes, uh, I, I was, love that. I was going to ask you something. I can't remember what it was. Oh, I know what I was going to ask you. I, I don't think that it got caught because I pushed the recording too late. But we were. I was telling you that I just love your vivaciousness. You know, I love the way that you're always smiling because it's no bullshit. It's real. And the fact that you can sit here and talk about two and a half years of pure hell <laughs> that preceded <laughs> you coming out on the podcast. Um, uh, and, and to, and to, you know, that I was, I remember writing a poem years ago when I was on the streets and it was like, uh, that the sun, the soul and the smile were all, all the same thing. Uh, 
because no one can take it away from you, right? And and you can't really fake uh, the sun, and you can't fake a, the soul, and you can't fake a smile. And so, I find it I find it really inspiring that you you carry the type of energy you carry, knowing that you're just like all of us, and that you've had your ups and downs. And 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 I remember now a little bit more detail uh, in in our show in our shows together. Um, but do you do you often or or how frequently? Because I mean the energies this year in 2023 are just off the hook, right? I mean you could just be walking down the street, and the next thing you know, the universe kicks you in the ass, and you're laying face down. <laughs> you know, what the hell just happened? But do you do you how frequent do you get? Uh, I don't want to say you know triggered, but that you have to like check yourself because this year it, it it's not just you know, necessarily a mental thing or an emotional thing or a memory comes up. It can be a physical thing for a lot of people now. You know, I know I have to catch myself two, three times a day. I'm like, oh, wait a minute, am I dying? Oh, no, 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 <laughs> I'm not dying. Just breathe, you know. But uh, how often do you uh, kind of get knocked a little bit and and does it last very long? And do you, how, how do you get out of it? Oh, great question. Well, first, thank you so much for all the acknowledgement. And it means so much to me, Todd, that, um, you know, your support and everything that you've offered through your programming and through being on my podcast, like just so many things. And I'm constantly inspired by you. And I know many other people are as well, even though I know that's not something that you focus your energies. I just want to reflect that back to you that it is really powerful. And I do want to say one other thing about the dark night of the soul and yes i know everyone that's been through it it's super challenging but i will say it was also the biggest gift right because without yeah. that um the podcast would not have happened i wouldn't be sitting here with you so i think that's been an important part of the journey is to reflect and to give gratitude and you know, when the things all first unfolded, you know, you go into that place of feeling like a victim or like, oh my God, how did this thing happen to me? And I'm such a good person. But then through my journey, I was able to look back and actually give gratitude even for my business partner, right? Where all of this kind of fell apart and to say, you know, thank you because you played a part in having this happen. So I do want to mention that and just give gratitude for that. And in terms of the question that you're asking, it's so funny. I mean, just... I think it's like a daily thing, right, Todd, like different things creep up on you. And I will catch myself like the day when you sent me a message and say, hey, come on the show. I'm like, me? What? Why does he want me on the show? I mean, here's this woman on his show right now. And I'm just like blown away by the information and that imposter syndrome kicked in, right? Mm -hmm. But then what was beautiful, the next time I caught your live, you were like, well, yes. And I, I've always wanted to bring all these women who are stepping out and weren't comfortable. I was like, okay. I felt like, okay, I think he's talking to me. That is, he's just like always open to inviting everybody. And it's a little bit of a tangent, but I want to tie it in because one of the things that I loved about catching your live yesterday where you were talking about the Sology Fest, which is going to be taking place in December, is I so resonated with everybody's a star. Like, mm. that's what came through. It's like, that's what we're doing when we do our work on our platform, Todd, is every person gets to feel like a star, right? Everybody yeah, and look at, you, and look at your logo. <laughs> I'm you're saying that I'm looking at your logo with the star in the middle and everything coming out. I know, right? Yeah. And I didn't know when I was doing my logo and all of those things. Again, I'm sure some of it was divine. It dropped down. I mean, I am a graphic designer. That's oh. one of my tools. So I was sketching my logo and it just sort of like, that's what felt right. And it's, you know, as I look at it now and people always give me compliments on the logo and the background, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. There is a star back there, you know, and it's reflecting back to others as well when they're looking at it, but everybody's a star, right? And I think yeah. that that's such an important thing. <laughs> However, in our daily every day, we will confront things like I will catch myself like being judgmental about something right, and then be like, right. okay, hold on, Vanita, what was that about? Like, where did that come from? Or, you know, you have your up and down every day that happens. But yeah. I think as we're moving along in our journey and 
we have these tools that we're able to access, right? It's so much faster. Like the same thing that I could have like probably pondered for like a week, two years ago. Now, within probably minutes, I'm like, oh, okay, I see it. I understand. Maybe I need to sit with it. Maybe I need to do something else. Maybe I can just be with it. Maybe I can transmute it. So there's like so many more things, like tools that we can play with to assist us. And we get to realize that we have choice in every moment, right? So that's kind of what I'm kind of navigating yeah. through right now is catching myself and just working on trying to be the best version of myself every day. That, yeah, is, think, that is my yeah. hope. Yeah, that's, you know, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, this is what I've been experiencing since, uh, um like october of last year uh i noticed there was september october i noticed there was a difference of the people coming on uh they were they were more humble and uh and I, I i i believe you explained it to perfection uh that's really where we're at now uh we're that's why i think so many people are spending a lot of time alone uh even if they don't live alone, they might, you know, but they're, they're, it's a necessity uh, because we are catching ourselves, you know, because ultimately we know that where there is judgment, there is enslavement, you know, and where there is no judgment, there is freedom. Um, and, and, uh, and even, even, uh, you know, like saying that uh, pretty words and all that, or you can say, uh, you know, if I, um if i have uh let's say i have a, a frequency of superiority which which comes with judgment because if, if i'm in judgment somebody's superior and somebody's inferior right and it could be me either one of those positions but you know i realized the the fact that it judgment carries perpetrator energy that's all there is to it it's not even real uh, it's a product of this distorted realm, just like other things that are byproducts, such as forgiveness. I mean, in the 5D, 6D, whatever you want to call it, there is no forgiveness because there's nothing to forgive. <laughs> you know what I mean? So what I'm getting at is that I love the way you describe it uh, because you're not mincing words and you're not damning, you know, like we've done and I've done many times, beam me up, get me the hell out of here. I'm done. You know, uh, but I think we're part of this, this, uh, I don't want to say painful process, but let's just say necessary process of initiation that we're having real conversations with ourselves now. And we're, we're not able to project it outward and externalize it. And, and the universe just won't let us go. It's like a dog's got his teeth in our ass and it just won't, we can't shake it off. So you've got to it just keeps coming back as the as the adage goes you know so but i but i believe that we're gaining um a greater reverence for ourselves and respect for ourselves and i know that there are people going through that some deep 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 uh transmutation uh which means before you can transmute something you have to really really get real with yourself and and it's a bit challenging because there is a quality of linear time that still kind of lingers. And so we that that whole comparison thing, uh, which isn't real either, uh, kind of can can kind of uh, gnaw at us and talk to us and bring us down a little bit. But but to just kind of sum it up uh, in what you said, because I, I do believe you said it really perfectly, is that we're we're uh it's not killing us and and we're we're able to to uh we're getting through it and and it's and it's a very powerful it's probably the in my opinion the most powerful activation that we have and and i for me the way i can tell is i don't go tell everybody <laughs> i don't go say hey guess what i just learned i want to a little part of me goes, hey, you need to go tell everybody. But there's a part of me that's so, you know, there's a, it's funny because the word humility and the word, I'm sorry, the, the word humiliation and the word humility 
have the same etymology and root, uh, but it's 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 that whole polarity thing. You know, it's that zero point thing. But yeah, the the, the humility, humiliation, whatever you want to call it, that's that's you know, realize and experience within self just knows that you know whatever we're doing we don't have to say anything because just like you when you got on today and i was saying wow you know you're always like this like i'm looking at you right now like you got this <laughs> smile and you're ready to go and you're perched up on the you know hey but yeah it's like tuning forks right it's like uh it's like a light bulb or a star yeah a star and that that's a, a thing i want to say too that is that is what it's all about to me that everybody is a star everybody and and uh yeah you know i get frustrated now and then not too much but i used to you know where i'm like i know what we're putting out i know all these years what we're putting out and uh and i see these clickbait platforms and, and and all this salacious salacious uh, sensationalistic uh, you know all this bs and, and i see all these huge numbers and i know they're not real but i really feel like that you know the 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 frequent the band of frequencies that we all create together uh hasn't been for nothing and it's starting to you know the cream is rising to the top and this isn't about Todd or Sully it's about all of us so yeah I, I just feel like that there's so much momentum now uh and and it and it's 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 outweighing the projection that is part of the growing pains and evolution right that we still see in the light worker communities and the world in general you know Wow, you're just like lighting me up today. I don't know what the hell you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> it must be that Ayurveda something. I don't know what happened. Uh, I love that. Well, it's really interesting you said that, Todd. Thank you so much for sharing. I, I felt you get emotional and really deep there. And, you know, that's one of the things I love about you. You're just very, like, open and genuine and, like, whatever's coming up. And it was very interesting. I don't know if this is part of my human design, but there was something that I was told that um, my energy allows people to share sometimes more than what they thought they were going to share and then they keep going and it's like I just allow for that space so I'm like yes absolutely share bring it out and I do want to say that you know in everything that you're sharing I completely agree and I think that this is part of the work that we're doing right mm -hmm. Todd you me and so many others it's mm -hmm. like some of us have to push through so that others can also push through with us but it it's sort of like some of us have to like be the trailblazers right I mean you're definitely someone who's right there and you're inspiring a lot of us including myself and it's about us co-creating right because if we are putting out there and I truly believe that we both do this is the energy is always about everybody is a star right. everybody is a star and i think the more people can realize that outside of themselves because that's where we get stuck right because if we just get sometimes left by ourselves todd it is very hard for us to see the magic that we are yeah. sometimes you need something external to reflect it to say you are you're amazing yeah, and yeah. share who you are because you know what something yeah. in what you shares is going to be a light bulb for someone else it's going to be a light for someone else so i think that's super important and then this other piece that you talked about you know when it comes to money and all of these things what i love is that for me i feel like your platform is really pushing and showing people a different way that we can work and co-create together where we can all be abundant. Yes, it's gonna take some time, but it's like the right path. And I remember when I had my food business, the one that I had to close down, even at that time, one of the things that I enjoyed the most was with all my beautiful foodpreneurs, I would always say, hey, can we barter? Like, let's not like bring money into the equation. Let's exchange goods. And for me, that idea has always held that that's what I 
want to create like a space where we don't have to worry about right. like that physical money it's literally just energy exchange or like people just exchanging things and right. <clears throat> i just think that's so beautiful i know we're working towards that and i feel like you're really pushing forward with that so i'm really excited to see what you continue to create but um it's just been so beautiful and i'm really excited for Sology Fest, I know you're still in the works and there's much to be done, but I think one of the things I did want to mention is what is wonderful is that your energy and excitement, when mm. that gets pushed out to all of us, we get yeah, excited. Yeah. I was being yeah, honest yeah. with you. I said, Todd, it wasn't really even on my radar until I caught mm -hmm. your live. And I was like, "Woo, this is really exciting. I know it's in the works, but I feel like I want to be part of it. And I think that's the beauty is mm. that's the fire it's because it's spreading right it's just yeah, other yeah. people going to just pop up being like hey i listened and i want to do this or i want to help with that it's like this is how it happens this is how we keep co-creating together by sharing and putting it out there but our energy and excitement is leading the way yeah and that's you know it's guy you said a lot there and I, i'm getting like totally activated the whole, the whole <laughs> this whole thing um but it, yeah, going back to what we were saying as the podcast is an example and like me sitting on the couch and you taking six months and, uh, you know, that happened for almost a month. <laughs> almost a month. I was sitting here just treading water, paying things. I was, you know, I had a couple of, you know, there's quite a few things that go into Sology just to do the show right like uh different apps and different things that you know and, and i was missing payments and but the, my soul kept saying don't worry about it there's no linear time take that pressure off and and so i had the wheel spinning of how can i do this how can i make every promo how can i answer every email and message how can i do how can i do all this this is just like you know, I'm I'm tired of it. And finally, I realized that I was on the pity pot. And it came down to what you said in the beginning, like, what will make you happy? And serving, you know, there's there's just a few things that make us happy, right? And uh and in as far as you know, wrong word, but locationally speaking, uh this is what makes me happy, bringing people together and and you know, all the things that I'm 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 you know, blessed to be involved in. And, you know, I've learned something along the way. Uh, we've tried to assist people in, in the more conventional ways at times. You know, we raised, you know, quite a bit of money uh, last year as we were heading into the Sology Fest last year. You know, somebody's car broke down and, you know, this happens and that happens. And, you know, it's funny, my friends made a remark to me. <laughs> they said, well, finally, Todd's you're gonna you know, have some money coming in. I wonder if he's gonna give it all away again. <laughs> but I never looked at it that way. I always understood, or, or at least to the best of my ability, people can look at me and say, like what you were talking about earlier, you're always gonna have people, but nobody really understands but yourself. But what I learned was a really valuable lesson is mm -hmm. that uh, because as a result of the uh, impact or, or the p penetration we have as Sology, uh, on the different platforms, sometimes people I, I, people will hit me up and say, hey, this happened or that happened. And, you know, they kind of directly or indirectly are looking for uh, some relief. And, and I understand that. I'm not, and I've done it. You know, it's not anything bad, but I'm, I'm just trying to make a point that there's a big difference between holding each other up and collaborating. And if we collaborate and we encourage, like you're talking about, people to be themselves, to accept the truth that everybody is a star, which includes themselves, uh, then all of this, all of the things that we end up uh, experiencing that basically can be uh, equated to lack, limitation, sickness, uh, and such, they all go away. They really do. They all go away. And, uh, and, and as I learned a long time ago, uh, creativity is really the root of our, you know, or is the physical, or can you can see the physical, uh, you know, ripples or uh, expressions and manifestations of our life force energy. Uh, and, 
and creativity can be applied in every single and should be. It's our natural nature at every single aspect of our lives to include problem resolution, to include, you know, but the but the key is that it's there's no way that we're able to sustain our builders and sustain anything anymore unless it's in that trinity energy of win-win-win of collaboration and co-creation true collaboration and so that's it's it's interesting watching this whole sology thing now because <clears throat> it's been pretty wild the last 120 days since we left social media uh, at least for me <laughs> i'm sure other people have gone through it too but the amazing thing is just like yesterday when i finally got to the point where we were able to launch it um and again this is just an example of our natural nature i believe and what you're talking about before the day was over so many things fell into place and so many people stepped up and they weren't grand slams that put a hundred thousand dollars in the bank or oh wow and i can rest it wasn't like that they were just little little physical synchronicities that with every one of them you went oh yeah oh yeah and and then you get to the end of the day or the next day and i'm like just for a second you know it pops in that lack or limitation or how am i gonna and, oh, oh no 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 just have faith in this just have faith in this and i was talking to a collaborator someone that stepped up that's we've actually been connected since 2014 i guess it's okay to mention you know marina govier she's our graphic uh, artist and whatever else you call these things uh and we've we've worked together before and i and i told her that today i said i gotta tell you something um i have this program in me that i don't want to ask you to do things that you don't want to do i don't want to upset you or whatever however i you know what i mean i don't want to impose myself on she's like that don't worry about it i i i'm 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 doing what i love doing you know whether there was abundance or not involved whatever the case you know it doesn't matter and 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 i realized uh two things one i was able to be honest you know and vulnerable and two i just need to get out of the way <laughs> because it's actually it's actually happening for all of us you know and 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 it's through the actions that it that it that it exists it's if we sit here and talk ourselves out of it then it, we're going to be right we're going to be right where we're back where we started you know and so it it requires this movement and uh and it's extraordinary because like doing this show right now so much is coming to me, but this is how it is. This is how it works. It actually doesn't stop. You know, it's amazing. What a what a wonderful experience. Thank you. Oh my God, so amazing. And you know, the other thing I want to mention while you were talking, Todd, is, you know, this is part of the journey where a lot of us have had to do so much by ourselves. It's almost deep programming and deconditioning that and saying it's okay to ask others for help, because yeah. guess what? Maybe they're just waiting for you to ask. Yeah. And they're saying, he's not gonna ask me because of whatever reason. It's like, that's something that we have to open up to, especially when we're looking at co-creating, right? To say, yeah. Yeah. I don't have to do it by myself. And I think that's the energy I feel yeah. of what we're stepping into is all of this lone wolf, kind of hoofing it by yourself. That's the old way. Like if we all want to, birth and create this amazing, you know, whatever 5D earth, whatever you want to call it, we cannot do it by ourselves. Right. So we all need to get together and get over ourselves over certain things, mm. right? Yeah, and that's just, like, just, yeah, just, you know what, release it, release it and yeah. just keep moving forward. And it's not going to happen in an instant, yeah. but you catch yourself, right? Like Todd, you caught yourself when you're mm. like, I'm just going to be honest and say to her, I feel uncomfortable, but that yeah. was your own thing. That had yeah. nothing to do with her. <laughs> I know, and I knew it did. I knew it, I knew it did. I knew yes. it had, I knew it was all about me, but I had I still had to say it. Yes. You know, we had uh uh Lisa Harrison. I told this story twice, but I'll tell it one more time. We had Lisa Harrison on 
uh, from Australia who's, who's, she's well put together. And, uh, uh, and I was asking her, I said, you know, cause we were talking about some of her experiences, which are pretty wild. If, if you never checked her out, check her out, Lisa K. Harrison, I think on YouTube. Uh, cause she documented communication on the screen and otherwise with aspects, you know, other aspects, right? Universal aspects, um, are communicated through technology. So I said to her, you know, I have a question. Like, for instance, Morgan and I were in our bedroom and we were, we knew something was going on. So we were, you know, positioned ourselves and we then were joined by six translucent beings, right? And this whole ritual thing happened or whatever. And I said, were those us? Or were those like you're there and I'm here kind of thing? And 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 two of them had walked into my back. She goes, Well, those obviously were you. The other ones, I don't know, but they they but one thing that she said I know is that it's very important. It's like a uh uh I, I want to say sacred, but like a necessary element of universal experience or universal, whatever you want to call it, where beings bear witness right they bear witness so when i had that conversation with marina she was bearing witness right like like in essence we bear witness a few times like on the show right now uh but I, but i realized the importance of that and i realized there's a difference between holding space because there's so much energy now in words and in, in you know what i mean connotations there's a big difference to me now between bearing witness and holding space. Holding space indicates to me something's out of alignment. Somebody's sick. Somebody needs help, right? Kind of like, you know, healing will go, the word healing will go away, right? Bearing witness is is allowing, you because know, everyone everybody's a star doesn't just mean everybody gets to get up on the stage and has a spotlight and, and everything's all fun. It means that uh, everybody uh can will and should be seen and heard and felt right and there's some type of giant release that happens with that so thank you for pointing that out you know you're 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 killing me today you're, you're, <laughs> you are you're just you're just like killing me you know oh my gosh i love it so much i mean Honestly, I know we're like recording a podcast, but it feels like you and I are just having this conversation over some beautiful food, some, mm. you know, organic tea or coffee, like we're sitting next to each other, like that's the experience I'm feeling. And how amazing is that, right? Given that we're in completely different spaces, but even with technology to be able to feel so in sync, right? To be yeah. so connected and, um, you know, this conversation is just flowing in all of these directions because it's just, you know, bringing up things for us. And one of the things that I truly love about this, whether we're even aware of it, is there's always so much um, kind of healing that is constantly going on. And one of the things that I don't know about you, but because you have so many shows, so you probably don't have time to do, um, you know, all this work. But I know that every time an episode happens and I listen to it again, because I don't really edit my episodes. I try not to. I leave them pretty much as they are. But in just listening to them again, wow, I'm blown away because yeah, it's like yeah. there's a difference between me sitting and interviewing somebody. And then when I get to just listen, whole different ball game, And I feel like I get so many insights and so many activations it's like incredible and as i'm saying that it's 222 for me so yeah me too i mean <laughs> i mean but yeah you know i i have a i i'm having to spend a lot of time making excerpts uh so we can bridge um you know bridge this transition you know from regular social media to to our an independent thriving network of thousands of people <laughs> and uh it's hard for me to listen to myself it, it it's it's really hard um and i know that's something i got to work on uh i don't know what it is 
I don't know what it is. Uh, you know, I mean, after a year of making music, um, you know, I've I've got some, especially recently, you know, like recently, because when we do the show, it's 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 very uh, impromptu and improvisational, and so we we engage the audience. And a couple of weeks ago, I was going through something, and Donna Owens, my sister from Texas, she she submitted this point right and it was so crazy it's like my soul took over and 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 i was like um i just said oh mother goddess is speaking through donna owens and then i just started like went into this melody and it was like i hadn't read the words but they were so deep and they were like written for me (laughs) it was the craziest thing so if it's something like that i can listen to it two no no more than three times but shows, it's it's kind of difficult for me to see myself on the screen, to to hear the voice. But I do agree with what you're saying. Uh, even if it's the second time you're watching something that you weren't an actor or participant, there's always, like when you watch a movie for the second time, you get so much more. When you read a book for the second time, when I used to read a lot, I would always get more. I would always look forward to reading the book the second time. Uh, yeah there's really something to that um and you know maybe i'll maybe maybe i'm not supposed to listen to my you know or but i really i'm paying attention to that because i'm very aware that anything that makes us uh uncomfortable there's something to be learned (laughs) so it probably has to do i'm getting a big download right now both sides (laughs) masculine and feminine it probably has to do with self-worth that's what that's probably what it is i'm sure that's what it is so and again these are things that i have learned from others i have learned uh it's okay to to be transparent and, and to say, hey, you know, I'm not what you think I am, you know? I'm not, you know, like this, it may look easy or whatever. I had a lot of people tell me that, oh, you make it look easy. And, but I'm not that. I'm just as much the little child as you are, you know? And, uh, and everything that comes with it, which is beautiful. You know, I mean, the, the, when a kid cries, it's beautiful. You know, when they're, when they're, you know what I mean? When they laugh, it's beautiful, right? It's just like everything is so genuine and pure. And, 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 and to think that we don't have to pose anymore and wear masks anymore and, and, and try to put on a persona anymore and, and just actually it's okay. And not only is it okay to be transparent, but it's fucking powerful in a weird way (laughs) (laughs) yes yes oh my gosh i love that anubis is here death is on the table here death (laughs) we're dying (laughs) i'm dying again i love that well i just wanted to add one thing since you brought it up and i think it's so perfect um talking about the inner child right because to me one of the biggest parts of this journey that we're on is to reconnect and to embrace and to allow that inner child to not only be completely healed, but to come out and play now. And so that's what I feel. I feel like all of this joy and excitement, this is coming out because that child in us is healing or healed and it's like ready to come out and play and say hey stop being so serious let's have some fun yeah exactly let's be joyful and you had shared this example of like you know you're playing as a kid and your parents like come in for dinner you're like but i just want to play i just want to play and now we get to create those rules todd like you know what yeah i just want to play so what am i going to do what's my new game what am i going to play I'm so glad I we connected today. Ah, oh, it made me feel so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you realize how much stress there is, you know, and uh, and, and well, you after the fact, right? Like uh, I actually had I, I had seizures from uh, 15 to 50. 
I'm 61 now. And uh, I had about, I don't really know the exact number, but like 150 to 200 seizures. So they were a frequent part of my life. And I was only conscious in one. And I had a, you know, near death or out of body, whatever. To me, it's all the same thing. And I had a 12 foot angel and we had this big conversation and life changed after that. But the other night I was actually, uh, I'd been working a lot. I hadn't, you know, still getting roadblocks from the Sology Fest and roadblocks and all that. And so um, I went for a walk and I went and sat down and I came across that, that part of the session where I was telling you about that song. And I just went, oh, I don't remember this. And there we go with this, hearing something a second time, right? I thought, wow, who's that? That's me. And then I started feeling everything. And then I started, then I listened to it a second time. And then I said, because I have a rule, you know, like you listen to it three times, that's it. Because then then it something happens to me. I just can't, you know. And uh and I had a seizure. I and this was on the 25th, a day at a time. I, I wrote about some of this. I had I had some amazing, I had this crazy experience, but it was the only other time I've ever been conscious having a seizure. Not to mention I haven't had one in 11 years. Uh, but my point is, it was, it was, um, I don't know, it was some kind of seminal moment that wasn't just about the individual, but it was about all of us. Like, and 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 what happened was when I was conscious. And everything went black and I'm supposed to be passed out and going, you know, move the <laughs> gyrating, like when you have a seizure and all. And, uh, but I wasn't, I was in this total darkness and, uh, and I was having a conversation with the void. And I said, Whoa, this is like the deepest it's ever been. And it was like, you know, answering without answering. <laughs> like you're all on your own we're not saying shit you know and i was like holy crap this is this is this is it right i mean this is actually death this isn't just words oh i'm gonna die and lose an identity i'm actually being faced with with death and it's not even just physical death we're talking about it's like soul death that's what it felt like and uh and i said okay you know i surrender and again I don't know why I got on this tangent. I guess I just needed to talk. But uh, that surrender, because I had a lady ask me the other day, because on one of my old memes, it said, I remember the day I surrendered. And she goes, it'd be nice if you would do a show and tell everybody, well, what was that day like? What happened and all that? So anyway, it was like that. And, and the surrender was in total darkness. There's nothing there. There's no angels. There's no demons. There's nothing. Just blackness. And 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 but there was this massive energy like in a in a wormhole or a vortex and uh and i said okay i i surrender i tr you know i surrender you know like i'm not going to change i'm love and you know whatever it was but but the feeling was so like uncomfortable like scary not only say scary but yeah scary but i was not in fear right? if that makes sense like it was just so and that's that's to me important uh because i think that's what comes with as you step as we step into vul uh, greater vulnerability and ultimately transparency and 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 see these are the things that that i think really bring us together is being able to say oh you just like me right so all this time we've been comparing ourselves like oh she can do this and he can do that and i can't do it but the truth is you know there are certain things that we all do, and there's one thing that we all have in common, and that is we've all been through this. Nobody's nobody's suffered any more. It may look like it or less than anybody else. This is, I don't care. You know, it's just we've all felt it, right? Wow. God, I feel like I just had a session. How much do you try? How much do you charge an hour? What, did, what what happened here? I don't even know what happened here. I'm just like, I don't know what's going on. This is crazy. I love I, it. Oh my I, goodness. I got two more shows today. I haven't done three shows in a day in a long time. I love you and thank you. Oh. And I hope you I hope you come and uh I'm gonna reach out to you because I want to talk to you uh yeah. about yeah. a couple of things.
It's uh, just well, been... I want to tell you the truth. I want to talk to you about the network, and I want to talk to you about, uh, you know, well, you know what? Let's just put it out there. <laughs> they might as well be transferred. Well, there are people that have created podcasts that we were talking about, like you, and and they're on these other platforms. We don't, we never had a rule at Solar Fest, but we've had to to create the container and maintain and uh, sustain this container, right? And it may not be forever. That's why I'll give you a recording after this. Thank you so much. I love you. Thank you for letting me be transparent. And uh... Oh my gosh. This has been such an incredible co-creation. Mm. It's almost like I didn't even realize that we're on a podcast recording. Like we're just in a flow and yeah. it's been so beautiful. Thank you for mm. seeing me, for believing in me and for everything that you God, yeah. I'm just so honored and I can't wait to keep continuing to co-create and collaborate with you. So I'm super excited. Yeah, Thank absolutely. Absolutely. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.